Dusty, I'm going to ask you not to go too far. I just got an idea. Just have a seat by Bodie. I just engaged him too. Uh, before, before we begin, uh, so, something's on my heart. I believe that the Holy Spirit has put something on my heart uh, this morning. Uh, I, I think for, uh, more, uh, for more than one of us, uh, but especially for someone this morning. So we, we may all be about to pause and just address one person, but, but if it's you, we'll just leave it between you and the Holy Spirit. Um, I think that... There's at least one of us in, in, in this place this morning that uh, has been so engulfed, even just this morning, by bitterness, uh, that it doesn't matter what I'm about to say because you can't hear it, uh, because you're so angry inside, and, and there's someone that you're uh, bitter towards. Maybe you don't even know why, uh, um, but someone has, someone has stepped on your pride. And it stopped being about them, and it's, it's about you. So can I give us just a minute, if that's you, will you just take that to the Lord and ask Him to hold that because you can't hold it? Because we have to do this before we can move on because you, you, the, no matter what scripture, no matter what message comes across, we're, we're blocked off. So I'm going to ask you just to, just to take these things uh, to the Lord. Only you know. This morning, not asking anybody to pop corn up, stand, raise your hand, anything like that, but would you just deal with that this morning? Would you be brave enough to take that to the Lord? Let's pray. God, there's images of people uh, running through minds in this place this morning, uh, memories uh, that shouldn't shouldn't even. There's no reason they should come up this morning, but they are, Father. And we know that the the enemy is uh, here to distract us, Father. And our minds are just engaged in something this morning that is not you. Would you take that, Father? Someone has stepped on our pride. Someone has hurt our feelings, and they were not remorseful, Father. And so we're just angry. And God, we give that to you this morning. You have something to speak to us, and we want to hear it. We don't want to be distracted, Lord, um, by these other things. Would you take that? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, so I've been working on this sermon for a, a couple of weeks now, and we just made a switch over to Galatians chapter 5, so I want you to join me there. If you have a Bible, please feel free to turn to Galatians chapter 5. If you don't, uh, we will have all the scripture on the screen, so uh, everything is okay. If you don't have a Bible, we would love to give you one, but understand this, that we did not expect you to be an expert in the Bible when you got here. You might not even know where the book of Galatians is. That's okay. That's why we're here, right? So uh, just, just real quick, the Bible is in two sections. There's Old Testament, New Testament. The Old Testament is God uh, creating the world, choosing his people, promising that he's going to bring a Messiah. And in the New Testament is when he brings, uh, he brings that Messiah. That was Jesus. It changes everything. We're in the New Testament today uh, in, in a letter to the church in Galatia. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, the, the Bible says this. For freedom, Christ set us free. For freedom, he set you free. Why did God free you? So that you would be free. Seems too simple. Hold on. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. Jesus came so that you would be free. So be free. The book of Galatians is written early in the history of the church. And I'm talking about the New Testament church. Okay, this was the Apostle Paul, uh, and, and he was alive. Now, we don't think that he met Jesus in person, but they were alive at the same time. This is, a, this is an early, early book. Christianity had just begun, and people were being set free from the law, from all the criteria of what they had to do to be saved and be a Christian, And then they were jumping right back into a new set of laws and a new set of 
slavery, if you will, a new set of trying to achieve salvation for themselves. So because that was the old law. You gotta make the sacrifice, you gotta pay for these sins, you've gotta do this with your food, like you've gotta do all these things and this is how you become conscious of sin. This is how you get to God, this is how you get rid of these sins. But Jesus came and he set you free from all of those things. Wait, from the law? Wasn't that God? that? Made? Yeah, he set you free. And then we jump right back into slavery. They were doing this as soon as Christianity began. They were jumping back into, well, what are the rules? Well, what are the rules? You've been set free. It's not about what I can't do. It's about what I should be doing. You've been set free. For what? For freedom. You get to choose. Do I follow the world or do I follow God? You've been set free. You have the choice. It's not about what I'm not supposed to do. And there are things we're not supposed to do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not condoning sin. It's about who we're supposed to run after, who we're supposed to follow. But they began placing requirements on people. Dusty, I need you real quick. So, so here, was, here was the church. Dusty's going to be the church. And, and here were the people. And they were down. They were captive. There was something on them. And the church is supposed to come and just help them up. Who? Who? Now, this seems really simple, but who? Who were they supposed to help up? For the first time in history, everyone. There was no elite class. There was no uh, gender. There was no race that God didn't care about. They were supposed to help everyone up. And now that I've been helped, right, I'm supposed to help others. Now, he helped me up. He didn't ask me anything. That you can go, that's all I needed for the moment. We'll be back. Bodie, come here real quick. Leave all that stuff. Leave all that stuff. Come here, slick. I, can, I can't do that with Dusty. Now, you lay down on the ground. Now, the church was helped up, and then we began to, in turn, well, I'll help you. Well, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> I'll help you, but wait, wait, wait. Have you been circumcised? I paid for that, so I happen to know you have. But <laughs> now, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you What have you been eating? Now, I, I want to help you up, but what have you been? And so they began to put rules and regulations, and God said, "Bring my children home." Okay, I'll bring you home. I want to take you to God. I got good news for you. But first, I got to know: Have you had any pork? Maybe, Maybe he says. <laughs> Have you, have you been circumcised? Have you been taking your Sabbath? Have you been, right, do you see? They immediately did what? They put slavery right back on themselves. I'm not gonna need you again. You need to, you need to, you need to go. You're too good looking. Everybody's looking at you. And so they began to have rules and regulations that they're putting on God's free gift. Good thing we don't do that anymore, huh? Listen to this. I, just, I, 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 want, I want to take you through this. John 3, 16. We're going to go through this. For, for God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who does what? Oh, we got to do it better. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who Believe. believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Everybody who's circumcised, everybody who doesn't eat pork, everybody who takes the Sabbath. No, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Romans 10, 9 if we could go there, uh, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Wait, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and you get circumcised. I keep using that same example because that's, that's what we were dealing with. They were excluding people. You cannot be saved. You cannot come to Jesus. And they were saying because of this rule you haven't met, because of this regulation you haven't met. No, it says uh, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you guys are not getting this. 
and believe that God raised him from the dead. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 2, 8. For you are saved by grace through faith. You're saved by grace through faith. I, I, I think that we could probably jump out there and say faith and believe are pretty close. One's almost like a noun form and verb form of the same word. Uh, for you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift from God. It's not from yourself, well, but I have to get circumcised, right? No, 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 it's not from you. It's a gift. It's faith. Acts chapter 16, verse 30. I love this one. I didn't write the whole thing down. <laughs> he has escorted them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then I left you in suspense because I didn't put verse 31 on here. Uh, but the answer is, believe okay uh, John three seventeen. maybe you've never gone past 16 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world uh, through him he's not here to condemn you he set you free from all those things he didn't come to put more regulations on you he came to bring you out of it Mark sixteen sixteen. 16 uh, when the Sabbath was over Mary Magdalene did I write the wrong one no that's not that's 16 1 that's Mark 16 1 Mark 16, 16. I told you I was working on this late last night. Apparently it was too late. Romans 1, 16. We'll skip that one. Uh, Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who Believe. believes. First for the Jew and also for the Greek. It is belief. What does God require you to do? Believe. Believe in what? That he exists. Satan believed that God exists. He wants you to believe in him as his Lord and Savior. Believe that he is the Messiah who came, the one who is going to take you with him. That is what God requires of you. Did you see the way Dusty helped me up with no questions? But now I begin to put requirements on Bodhi. Why are we putting requirements on people coming to church? Well, you're saying that you can just live willy-nilly and do whatever you want? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say there aren't requirements for the church. I said there are no requirements to get to the church, to become the church upon salvation. It is absolutely free for all. Now, once you get there, Hold up, because we got a few rules we got to abide by. I'm not taking away from that. In fact, read, read 1 John 2, 3. This is how I'm going to explain this. I think this is beautiful. You, you, you might want to write this one down. This is how we know that we know him if we keep his commands. The Bible doesn't say this is how we get to know him by keeping his commands. If you're waiting to keep all of God's commands before you get to God, you will never make it. You will reach the top of Mount Everest on a pogo stick first. You are not going to achieve all the requirements of perfection because to get to God, you must be holy and you are not without sin. The Bible says there's none righteous. So this is not how we know God, this is how we know that we know him, by keeping his commandments. See, works, deeds, actions, that's not how you get to know God, that's how you know that you got to know God. That make sense? This is not what saves us, this is how you know you got saved. Works are not how you get it, they're how you know you got it. I can't think of another word to say it, so we're done right there. Galatians chapter 5 verse uh, 13. Teen. Now that's the first thing, okay? Because we're talking last week and this week, we're talking about how to deal with people when I just can't deal with people. There's just a lot of mean people out there. I've, I've been a mean people before, so I know what I'm talking about. The first thing that you have to do is stop putting roadblocks in front of people who are trying to get to God. Stop putting requirements that don't exist on people coming into the kingdom of God. It's not biblical. Now the second thing, let's get started. Galatians 5, 13 and 15. For you were called to be free, brothers and sisters. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. Hmm. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus apparently never met your neighbors. 
I'm pretty sure his neighbors crucified him. Love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, here's the anthem for 2020. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out or you will be consumed by one another. You will be consumed by one another. Wonder what would it be like to live in a nation of people who were consuming one another? Watch out. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out or you will be consumed by one another. But what's the antidote? The antidote was in verse 14. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as your Self. See, it is for freedom that you've been set free, but did you ever notice that freedom comes with a responsibility? How many ex military or current military do we have in the place today? Yeah, that's why you have freedom. And they took that on themselves as a responsibility, or the freedom ceases to exist. Because with freedom, comes responsibility and Christ says to whom much is given much is required so God has given you a freedom he said come to me whoever there's nobody in here excluded well you don't know my past I don't have to Galatians was written by Paul do you know what Paul did for a living before he wrote Galatians he murdered Christians He's the one writing it. You are not excluded. There's, there's no requirement for you to get to freedom, but once you have freedom, you have responsibility. Responsibility. All right, Bodie, come on, bring me my stuff. Dusty, I need you again. Here, Slick. Oh, okay. All right. Now, Dusty, this time you're playing a little different role. You're going to be on the ground, and I'm going to be the other guy. Now, I've been helped up. Jesus has given me freedom. And so many of you, this has happened. I'm going to talk for a minute, so just make yourself comfortable. <laughs> for many of you, this has happened, and you say, man, you should have seen me before. Man, God has released me. I'm not having to look over my shoulder anymore. Some of you can pass the, you, you, you can pass the cops when you're on the interstate or whatever and there's highway patrol and you're nervous and you're like, oh wait, I'm not doing anything wrong for the first time and it feels good. <laughs> like if they pull me over, I'm okay. It feels good. You're not looking over your shoulder. You're not having to wonder if anybody knocking on my house, who do I owe this to? What have I done wrong to this person? And God has freed you from all those things. It feels good to live that way. And so when we get freedom, we start taking on extracurricular activities because I'm free now. I get to enjoy my life. Some of y'all were uh, uh, freed up as soon as Corona hit and you had to stay home. Everybody stayed home, right? Did you know RV rentals went up 1,000%? <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, stay home. If my home can move, loophole. Okay. <laughs> but we begin, to, we, we, we begin to fill our lives with things. And so we, we pick up things. Is there anything wrong with fishing? This is my tackle box. There's nothing wrong with fishing. You know who else fished? Jesus. Okay? Not a thing wrong with fishing. And so I pick this up and I begin to do some fishing. There's no problem with it. And then I, I have a cooler. Oh, you know. And so I might, oh, there's some binoculars in here. I might, I might, I have a little time to do some hunting. I've never, I always blew my money on bad stuff. And now for the first time, like, I, I can afford I can do some hunting. There's nothing wrong with hunting. You got to eat. And uh, I might, you know what? I got to start, I got to start exercising. <laughs> nah, no, nah, we will. <laughs> I, I'm going to start working on my music career. Maybe I'll, this is not, I don't know what I had planned right there. <laughs> but I have this headset on. Did you know, I mean, this is symbolic. I had to fit it in a cooler. Come on, I couldn't put a guitar in there. 
Maybe I'll start kicking it with my friends a little bit. Y'all knew a cooler had to have this in there. <laughs> right? And so, so some of these things, you're like, that's not evil. Well, wait, that one's it. Wait, Jesus said that drunkenness, okay? So let's get that straight. If you're in the kingdom of God, there is no room for drunkenness. And can I have a couple of these? If it's not your master, okay. You're not celebrating it to your kids, okay. I could have picked a less controversial thing, but I didn't think about that this morning. But I begin to, this is online too, isn't it? Get another cannon. Home renovations. Now, I begin to do all these things. And are these evil things? No. Can they become evil? Absolutely. Can they become your master? Absolutely. Can, can, can this can become your master? I, I don't know how because we all hate to paint. Can this can become your master? Yes, and it competes to do so. Okay. If you're wondering, uh, why don't you commit to just dropping this this week, come back this, this week and say, hey, man, it didn't master me because I left it alone all week long. Awesome. Then it's not your master. If you can't, you're struggling. That's why we're here to help, to love you. Did not mean to get into that today. Back to the notes. Now, if, if you have your hands full, whether it be with evil things or not, because I'm free, I can do these things now. Be careful not to abuse your freedom because now I have a friend who needs a hand up. And quite frankly, I got no room for you. I'm sorry. I got too much stuff going on. I got a fishing trip planned with my buddies. I got a hunting trip coming up. I can't spot you that $20 because I just bought a new scope for my rifle, which may or may not be convicting. I just promised my wife I would get this done, right? I would love for you to come over, but I don't want you to see what's in my fridge, Pastor. And so all these things, be they evil, be they neutral, or maybe good things, we can bring into our life of freedom in such a way that we have no room to do the work of God. And so it's for freedom that Christ has set you free, but if you abuse your freedoms, he says, for you were called to be free, brothers and sisters, only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. And so somebody helped you up, and we began to take all of those opportunities, and we began to, to use those to exploit those on only self, and now I've got no room to help my brother. And so that's how we take something that is not evil and turn it for evil. That's how we pervert the freedom that God has given us. Thank you, sir. Now, this is a tough one. Let's go back to verse 14 with me. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be consumed by one another. And we all look at our nation, we all look at our community and say, yes, there is biting and devouring. But now let's take it case by case. And some of these battles need to be fought. And I feel convicted because if I say nothing, then I'm being a coward, right? Right? Wrong. Or am I being divisive? I don't know. Let me throw this out there. Stay with me before you get angry with me. Let's just let the scripture decide. Sometimes it's okay to pick which hill you're going to die on. Does that make sense? Sometimes it's okay to pick which hill you're going to die on. Let me give you an example. If you go to the ocean, it is just awesome. 
to watch the dolphins. They're, they're amazing. They're intelligent. You're not supposed to, but I've taken bait and had them come, wild dolphins come eat out of my hand. It's magnificent. And, and when people catch shrimp and catch tuna, those dolphins are getting caught in that net. And they're dying needlessly. That's horrible. But that is not the same thing as sex trafficking. At all. I would sacrifice every dolphin in the world for one child who has been sold as a sex slave. Which happens every 30 seconds. Both of those things are wrong. But it ain't the same. Somebody's going to try to get you to dive into their fight, and sometimes you need to. But is that fight what you want to be known for? Is that the fight you want to win? Is that the hill you want to die on? Now, does that make more sense? We don't participate in evil, we don't even condone evil. But at the same time, there are things in this world that tick God off more than other things. You didn't know that. Well, everybody's always told me a sin is a sin is a sin is a sin. All sin separates you from God. So in that sense, all sin is the same. However, the Bible says, read Proverbs sometimes. God says, six things I hate, seven I detest. In other words, here's seven things that really tick me off. And number seven really ticks me off. Did God just say he hated one thing more than another? Yes. You ever notice in the New Testament when God lists sins that there are some in the list, because there are many lists, that there are some that are always listed first? Why? Those make him more angry. So will they separate you from God? Yes, all sin can separate us from God. But some of those things make him especially angry. This may be the first time you're ever hearing this. Take, take notes, write these things down. Go back and, go back and check me. I want, I want this to come, to come from the Lord. I want you to get this from the scripture. It's just not my opinion. This, however, is all me. I never told anybody this. I don't even think my wife knows this. She's in the children's room today maybe hearing me over the speaker. Uh, one of my first memories, I've never told anyone this. One of my first memories is a dream. I was incredibly young. And in my dream, a stoplight came out. You know how like in the uh, wrestling arena, the microphone comes down into the center stage and get ready. Like it came down like that, just lowered really, really slowly. And, and the light turned green and I began to ascend to heaven. It's one of my first memories. I was little. And I was like, I'm going to heaven. I was so pumped. And then later, uh, I, I stopped going to church, began to just kind of make that not part of my life. And, uh, I had that dream two more times. And in one of those dreams, I began to ascend to heaven again. And then I stopped. And I began to come back down. And God was speaking to me and he told me, you need to get your act right. But because I've had those dreams and they were so vivid and they were from God, absolutely. I, I just see Christ coming back for the church and my soul will leave my body. Praise God. And I will begin to ascend and I will go to meet Jesus in the clouds. And I know that all of my attention will be on him. Because in my dream, you know, it was like, I was so pumped. I can't even tell you I was sweating, but in a good way of like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I was so excited. But just imagine for a moment. Just imagine for a moment. 
that by the, maybe you're ascending slowly. The, the trumpet blows and Christ calls his church and your soul leaves your body. And before I get to the ceiling, before I leave the atmosphere, I can look around and see what's happening. Just imagine that for a moment. Now, we know that we're going to be focused on Christ. We know that we're, we're going to be so pumped, just lit up. But for just a second, if you could look around and maybe you begin to see your city and then back up and you see the county, what is going to be your regret? What is going to be your greatest source of pride? Look at what I did while I was here. Look at my yard, how green my grass is. That's going to burn up. And take care of your yard. But do you think you're going to be like, I bet God is going to be so proud of me. Look at how good my house looks from here. Look at all of these things that I did. Do you think that you will look at that? Or do you think you will look around and say, I should have told him. I should have told her. I worked in that building for 13 years and I never told one person. I don't see anybody leaving that building. That's the hill I want to die on. There are other fights that are good fights. There's nothing wrong with them, but none of them are going to matter in that moment. So I've been set free. And for what will I use my freedom? See, that's the thing about freedom is you get to choose. Well, why doesn't God just come down in the sky and say, here I am, you always wondered, feast upon me, look. Why doesn't he do that? Because then you don't have freedom anymore. You don't have faith anymore. You don't have the beauty of pursuing God, have the Holy Spirit rocking your body, transforming your mind. You lose all of that. No, his way was freedom. And to allow you to choose to follow him. Galatians 5, 19 through 26. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Look at those two lists and tell me, what does the fruit of the Spirit do for your neighbor? It separates you. It curses your neighbor. Listen to those things. Think about that. What does this do for my neighbor? Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger. What do those things do for your neighbor? Now listen to this one. The fruit of the Spirit is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What does that do for your neighbor? Computer, you don't have to follow me. Hold on. Remember what we said in Galatians 5.13. For you were called to be free, brothers and sisters, and don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. So when I use my freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, man, I'm free. Look at all the ways that I can feed my flesh. Then you begin to fight battles that don't really matter. But when I walk by the Spirit, I become a blessing to my neighbor. So everyone's going to love you? No, promise you. But God will be pleased with you and your neighbor will be blessed.
chapter 5, verse 26. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. You aren't better than anyone else. We don't look at anyone. We don't get to pick and choose who we help up. We're not better than anyone else. That's only happened one time. You know the only person who was better than somebody else but still helped them up? Jesus to you. (laughs) That's the only time judgment could have been cast but wasn't. We don't get to be arrogant. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Worship team, why don't y'all come on up? Don't be deceived. This is a biggie. Write this one down. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to the flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life from the spirit. You cannot sow at the same time discord and reap peace. I cannot sow curses and harvest blessing. Does that make sense? So God has set me free. He has gifted me. And if I choose to feed my flesh, I will die because of my flesh. Like literally? No, 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 no. Like metaphorically, like I will die inside. You will lose joy. You will lose happiness. You will lose contentment because you have fed your flesh It's easier than feeding the Spirit. It's easier than seeking God every morning. It's easier than saying, God, I will obey you even though I don't understand. But it will result in catastrophic consequences to you. But when I walk by the Spirit, my neighbor is blessed and my soul is fed. So how do I deal with people when I just can't deal with people? I use my freedom for their good the same way that Jesus used his for me. And it may be the hardest thing that you ever do. Funny thing about the hardest thing you'll ever do, it's probably the best thing you'll ever do. God is calling you to more. Maybe, though, you haven't found that freedom. So you can't use that freedom. Maybe, now this exists and I don't know how. Maybe I know God, but I'm still in addiction. I still have a master. I still struggle from this. I know We've all said that at some point. We're not sure how it can happen. Has God set you free? Yes. Are you mastered by anything? Yes. How am I free and mastered? Yes. (laughs) So you know what the church does? We make life groups. So that you can explore God's freedom. Because not only did we take our freedom and begin to put regulations on it for other people, we've taken our freedom and begin to put regulations on it for us as well. And God wants to set you free. Why? So you can be free. Pray with me. Lord, we praise you because you sought us out. There are so many who need freedom, Father. The Satan is Satan is large and in charge right now, God. He is just working overtime, Lord, and we have so many people that we love, even even within ourselves, God, that we need your freedom. Holy Spirit, would you work supernaturally in us? God, would you, would you use us for something greater? Show us that, that hill that you want us to die on, God. Show us the place that you want us to invest no matter who comes against us. And give us the courage and the strength to stand. And show us the hill that you don't want us on. So that we're not too busy and too tied up and too dead the fight on the hill that you have for us.
God, I pray for anybody who needs just salvation in this place, that they would run to you with no stumbling blocks, but ready to give their heart to you and commit to you. God, I pray for people who have uh, received you in their heart but are just super anxious knowing that you've called us to be baptized and show everyone that we're a follower of you. I pray that you'll give them the courage and the conviction to go through with that. And God, I pray that we will go out and treat our neighbors well and with love even when we feel like we can't because you did it for us. And so we ask all these things in your name. We praise you because of all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The worship team is going to do one more song. And uh, when they do, there's going to be some baskets that come up. Drop your connection card in there. Let us know what you're going through. If you're a believer, part of the way that we worship is with our tithe and offering. And so that's the appropriate time to drop that in there as well. You can also do that online, uh, thewoodbridgechurch.com. If you join us online today, thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us. Let us know that you're here. If you're, join- if you're one of our crew joining us from South America or Mexico, uh, let us know you're in there and go ahead and say it in Spanish just so that we know because we love you guys and adore that you're uh, joining us. Um, but as they come... Uh, with those baskets, don't let that be a distraction. And if God is convicting you and prompting you to make a decision, we, want, we don't want you to do it because there's warm, fuzzy music. We want you, when this music is over, everybody's leaving, we want you to come grab one of us and talk to us about what God is doing in your life so that we can walk beside you through it. So stand and worship with us.